everyone remembers their first time doing this. Or at least I did anyway. I remember this feeling like a puzzle in and of itself. Getting over to the orange portal by shooting through the blue portal, shooting a blue portal and going through the orange portal. When I first figured that out, it broke my mind. Now it seems like child's plays, you also have to juggle cubes, spheres, emancipation grids, turrets, death water, laser fields, thermal discouragement beams, discouragement redirection cubes, faith plates, hard light bridges, recursion funnels, speedy gel, bounty gel and portable gel. And yet some Somehow, all of these things at once don't interfere with Portal's simplistic design. When it comes to stuff like this, I'm never really quite sure where to start. Let my last Kingdoms video be an indication of that. So I'll just start by looking at the first Portal, originally just a filler game on the orange box. I would say that the first Portal is one of the few examples of a truly flawless game. First off, it's an hour long, it doesn't overstay its welcome, and everything that's in there needs to be there. It tells the story it wants to tell in the time that it has, and ends when it should. The game opens up with you in a glass cell, being instructed to solve tests with the promised reward of cake. And I mean, you know, if you've been on the internet long enough, you'll know where this ends up going. The cake was in fact a facade, a charlatan ruse! It's at this moment that the game goes from being a straightforward puzzle game to an action-oriented escape, using your newfound skills against the facility that trained you as you make your way through the rough, seedy underbelly of Aperture Science Enrichment Center. Okay, maybe it isn't entirely flawless. I find it hard to believe that you're the first ever person to see the obvious escape route from this. Plus, the boss fight at the end isn't really that interesting, to be honest. Plus, the way you fly in and out of portals might be a little bit too disorientating. <laughs> but it's still fantastic. From the very beginning of the game, you can sense that something isn't quite right. If you're a lab rat, exactly who is the one making the tests? You're surrounded by windows, but nobody seems to be watching. Are they? Making your way around these utterly sterile and clean test chambers and stumbling across these dens, leaving you to wonder exactly what kind of place this is as you have no choice but to continue. Making your escape, Aperture Science becomes a different environment entirely, the dirty industrial side of it being practically unrecognisable from the eerily glossy test chambers. Throughout the game, you become so used to using the portal gun in these specially designed testing rooms that using them in a more normal environment feels half unnerving, half liberating. It really adds to the feeling that you're somewhere you're not supposed to be. And yet still, you don't seem to find another human being living or dead. This seems like a pretty big place, one that's still operational by the looks of it. So where is everyone? Who is that disembodied voice that you keep hearing? Is it someone that you can trust? There's that constant feeling of isolation and loneliness closing in on you the entire time. Portal is absolutely incredible as a puzzle game with a pretty great story lying underneath. Top that off with Ellen McLean as GLaDOS, one of the best gaming antagonists of all time, and Jonathan Colton writing that now iconic theme still alive, you get a pretty incredible experience. It's a game that I would recommend to everyone, gamer or otherwise. As someone who used to write puzzle games off as boring, Portal really opened my eyes. It was both one of the shortest games I'd ever played at the time, but yet also one of the best. Next up is Portal 2, which is a different beast entirely. As for whether or not I like it more than the first game, it's incredibly hard to say. I'll say this, Portal 1 feels more refined, it might be the better game but I like Portal 2 more. That isn't to say that it's of higher quality necessarily, or it's lacking in flaws, it just means I like it more. But I guess in a way it's difficult to compare the two as they both have their focus on very different things. Whereas Portal 1 is completely stripped of fat and almost every second is of importance, Portal 2 loves showing off these huge vistas, or having you run down corridors as you listen to voice actors being extremely funny. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, it does all of these things very effectively but it's a very different approach to the way that Portal 1 uses its time, so I probably shouldn't compare. After all, I am comparing a throwaway orange box title to a full-length story that doesn't have to share a disc, so I'm willing to give it some leeway, because, you know, they are bound to be very different games because of that. In a lot of ways, it really is just more Portal. More puzzles, more story, and more characters, making up a pretty incredible cast, with Ellen McLean returning as GLaDOS, Stephen Merchant, one of my favourite British comedians and radio presenters, as Wheatley, and J.K. Simmons as Cave Johnson. 
There is a part of me that feels as though they might have turned up the silly meter a bit too high this time round. Aperture science seems to be full of absolute clowns, but hey, it's still fun. On one hand, Wheatley's non-stop babbling does kind of disrupt the silent, eerie feeling of lonely despair that the first game provided so well, but on the other hand, eh, when the writing's this good, I don't really mind so much. But despite Portal 2's more proud cinematic approach, it definitely still does retain that creepy, isolated feeling, albeit in a different way. In Portal 1, you were worried that you were being watched. In Portal 2, you know that you're not. There's absolutely nobody around, and there hasn't been for a long, long time. Or maybe there are other people around, hiding behind the scenes. Perhaps that's even creepier, come to think of it. It isn't a feeling that Portal 2 dwells on too much, but it's definitely there, lurking subtly in the background. Other than that, it's pretty clear from the get-go that Portal 2 is wasting no time at all using its newfound budget. It opens up with an impressive set piece, bringing you crash landing into a very familiar tutorial. It's a sentimental trip down memory lane for those who love the first game, and a useful recap for those who haven't played it. It does a good job of telling people what's going on. Not that I would ever want to recommend playing this game before Portal 1, but, I mean, you know, whatever. You do you, I guess. It teaches you the basics of the first game, and then slowly drip-feeds you a bunch of new mechanics. And it's crazy how all of these new mechanics just immediately click. It might take you a while to really process how to use a recursion funnel or hard light bridge effectively, but within seconds you understand the basics, the, the fundamentals of it. The game never has to pause to teach you what it is. You give it a go and you understand it, it's great. By the end of the game, you're juggling multiple mechanics at once with ease, making the original game seem like essentially what it is, a prototype. It just wasn't enough for Valve to make just another puzzle game, just more of the same genius gameplay elements in new environments, something that I don't think anyone would have complained about. It also had to throw in fantastic characters, an amazing score, a cinematic but also touching story about forgiveness, letting go, and the power and abuse that comes with authority. They couldn't just make a puzzle game. They saw what they had, and they thought, how do we make people cry with this? It's just incredible. Incredible all around, just fantastic. With all these things in mind, Portal 1 received a sequel that I don't even think Valve could have seen coming. But it's the sequel that a game like this deserved. Truly one of the best sequels that I've ever played, and a phenomenal game in its own right. But that's only scratching the surface of what Portal 2 provides. On top of that, it offers a fantastic co-op mode with its own campaign. One that feels smaller, more intimate, where progression is dictated by solving puzzles, not by set pieces, where the voice acting is back down to a minimum, with only GLaDOS providing the comic relief. While Portal 2's main campaign is bombastic and explosive and ambitious, the co-op feels like way more of an actual successor to Portal 1, and it's great! And I'm not saying that Portal 2 needed to be smaller and more intimate like the first game. Like I said, I am glad that it is that way. It needed to be bigger and better and more ambitious, and I'm glad it is that way. But I'm also glad that the game also does provide that same kind of experience as the first game. I worded that in a bad way, but y y you get what I mean, hopefully. <laughs> I understand how biased I sound in this video, but some of the best corp experiences I've ever had have been in Portal 2. It's so much fun! Overall, Portal 2 does a good job of hitting everything you might want, a natural development in terms of story and scope, or something more along the lines of the first game. Just as long as you have a friend to play with, I guess. And finally, no doubt the single biggest contributing factor as to why I love Portal 2 as much as I do. Why, despite the story being around 6 to 8 hours long max, I've sank an embarrassing amount of time into this game. The Perpetual Testing Initiative, aka Make Your Own Level Mode. And if there's any game on the planet that benefits from a Make Your Own Level Mode, my god, it's Portal! Then again, of course, I would say that, wouldn't I? So if there's one thing that some of these community test chambers prove, it's just how amazingly well-designed the main games are. Making a decent puzzle is remarkably difficult, as it turns out. I think it's fair to say that not all of them are to the standard of Valve's test chambers for a bloody myriad of reasons, but a lot of them are still really good. Sure, you have some levels that are way too big for no reason, they're very convoluted in their layout, or they're just kinda dumb, but at the same time, you 
get test chambers that not only rival the complexity and challenge of the main game, but also expand on a lot of ideas that Valve either never did or never really could. Like taking you outside or through a time machine, or, I mean, you know, even in Minecraft, I guess. Some of them even have their own narrative, using dialogue from the main game and Frankensteining pre-existing assets into something completely new. Some of them even turning the game into a different genre entirely, whether it's a racer, a tilty turny, or whatever this is meant to be. There's the sinking cars, but that's not my favourite. Of this, course. This is my favourite. Okay, you're gonna have to do the. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, perfect. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I like to see. I love Bonfire Night. At two in the afternoon, by the looks of it. Oh, mm, yeah. I love a I nice, like. gentle swim. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice, jittery splash in the pool. <laughs> Nothing perks me up like a nice, relaxing <laughs> splash. It's not really a morning swim unless you crack your brain open on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not really swimming, otherwise. And while the Portal 2 community isn't quite as thriving as it once was, there's always something new to find. Even after 320 hours, I still find myself impressed by what these guys do, so clearly there's a lot to work with. At the same time, I am worried that a level editor mode is Valve's way of saying, What do you mean, Portal 3? Make your own Portal 3, jeez! But, you know, this is still pretty nice. Like I said, some of these levels aren't worth playing, but some of them hit that special sweet spot that makes Portal so good. You can be completely stuck for hours on end until it all finally becomes obvious. Uh, oh! oh! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and that feeling's what Portal's all about to me, so it is good. Uh, As for the level editor itself, it's actually really intuitive. For the sake of this video, I thought I'd finally give it a shot, and just like everything else in this game, yeah, it, it clicked. Within no time at all, I made my very own level. A very simple one, granted, there's barely any challenge involved at all and you can beat it in under two minutes, but it was pretty fun to make. Link in the description below if you'd like to play it yourself. Like I said, it's nothing much at all, but I'm proud of it nonetheless because it's mine and I made it on myself. And from what I can tell, I'm not the only person starved of more Portal narratives. Some fans even take it upon themselves to craft their own projects entirely, the most popular of them all being Portal Stories Mail, a really well-made fan game that I at one point wrote off because I couldn't get past the bad Cave Johnson impression. Thankfully, he's not there the entire time and it does move on to new characters, at which point it became a lot better. It takes Portal in a bit of a weird direction and the writing is a bit mediocre, which, to be honest, is probably more the reason why I don't like the impersonator guy. Not because of the impression itself, the impression is not too bad. It's just Cave Johnson is one of those characters that it can be kind of hit and miss trying to recapture that personality. It's like seeing people do impressions of the Joker. Sometimes they're good, and, you know, sometimes the, you know... I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> but I can't deny how mind-blowing it is to see this much effort being put into a free mod. The puzzles are super well done and really difficult at times, and half the time I forgot I was even playing something made by fans for free. I don't mean to keep hopping on that one point, but I can't stress it enough that I just didn't expect it to have this much production quality. It's about halfway between a community-made level and Portal 2. Not really quite either, but has the best qualities from both. Give it a go right now! Like I said, it's free, so you have no excuse. Also, apologies to the, the guy who did Cave Johnson's voice in this. Like I said, I think it's more down to the writing than the impression, but either way, don't just don't do an impression of J.K. Simmons. Only J.K. Simmons should be allowed to do that. That's, that's my stance. As of today, I'd say that the Portal franchise still has some legs to it. Even just last month, the game that everyone was waiting for was finally announced and released. Bridge Constructor Portal. Yeah, I mean, you know, people weren't very happy about this at the time, and I have to admit, I don't know if I really see the connection between Portal and Bridge Construction. But for the sake of this video feeling more complete, I bought it and I played it for a little bit. And to be honest, even if there's no legitimate reason why this game should ever exist, it isn't too bad if you like that kind of thing. 
I put about an hour into it before getting bored. I mean, it's okay, but to be honest, I don't think I'll ever play it again. Although it was pretty fun seeing the little driver men cause a debilitating pile-up. Yeah, that was good. I liked that a lot. I mean, a lot of people died that day. It was bloody barbaric, absolute carnage, but I liked it. It was good. Other than that, there's a webcomic called Lab Rat that bridges the two games, expanding on a pretty interesting character that subtly hinted at in Portal 1 and 2. There's a LEGO Dimensions DLC pack, which I haven't played, and a few other things too. But that's more or less everything, or at least at the time of me making this anyway. Overall, I mean, what can I say? The Portal series is bloody fantastic. It's nothing short of incredible what Valve have done with a simple concept like Nob Bacular drop and surrounded it with such interesting lore and memorable quotable characters. That's a pretty difficult thing to pull off with such a simple premise to work with. I mean, how do you take a room with a portal gun and turn it into this? Valve did it and they made something incredible out of it. It's, ugh, it's, oh my god, it's so good. Even to this day, I'm never not in the mood to play Portal 2 with a friend, and as long as they keep making levels for it, I'll definitely still be there playing it, racking up those hours so they'll be even more embarrassing. <laughs> but hey, if you want to play with me, get in touch and let me know. I'll probably want to play it with you. I wouldn't mind making a new buddy through Portal. Why not? It'll be a blast for all. It's kind of insane to me that I've put this much time into it, and yet I can still feel stumped by it. Like, how are there even this many possibilities for a Portal? How have I not seen it all by now? I mean, I probably have, to be honest, I'm just remarkably forgetful. With just a few simple tools and mechanics, you get one of the most inventive series I've ever seen, somehow juggling a thousand gameplay mechanics at once without making any of them feel confusing or throwaway. They all fit together like satisfying puzzle pieces, while also juggling different character personalities and feeding you story information as you go. What should, by all accounts, feel like way too many things to focus on at once, just... yeah, you get it. It's a perfect perfect combination of many different ingredients seamlessly coming together to make a perfect chemical reaction. And if that isn't what science is all about, then I don't know what is.